Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Lynette. Um, we're going to pres um, present to you um, what we've done on our country working with cats. My name's Jacob Lockridge. I'm the IPA coordinator with the Yangamata Rangers. My name is Roberta Hunter. Um, I'm a Yangamata senior ranger. Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll tell you a little bit about our logo. Um, our cousin made the logo. It's, it's a picture of a large goanna and a turtle. So we dug up some turtle eggs last week, and the cats are always eating the turtle eggs along the beach, and one in a thousand turtles survive. Um, this one, eh? And this is our IPA, which is uh, 28,000 hectares or kilometers. Um, so this is where we, we live in Bijirenga community, which is south of Broome. If anyone been to Broome, so Bijirenga, and then we travel towards our IPA to care about um, animals that are on our IPA, and so we look after and, yeah. Um, so we did our management plan in 2022. Um, so in 2009, Yangomara Native Title awarded. 2015, IPA declared and Ranger Team established. Expanded men and women's ranger teams with cultural advices and elders 40 plus. Since first IPA management plan in 2015, feral cats control being a priority for Yangomara. Concern for bilbies and other significant species. Discovering new black footed rock wallaby populations known to be threatened by cats on Nigana Mangana country. And yeah, so the management plan we did last year, we had um, elders coming in f four trips we had. So they helped us with our management plan we did and um, had a big talk, serious talk. So what we want to have in our management plan. And there's a picture of um, the black footed rock wallaby and in the cave there and a cat eating uh, goanna. Um, so this is what we're doing now. We are doing two hectare plot surveying, um, putting out sensor cameras, surveys, threatened species, um, monitoring like bilby, black-footed rock wallaby, and northern coal, uh, fire management, cage trapping, and spotlighting. We also went for an idea exchange to Girkora, um, and also to Sydney last year doing a uh, presentation there, um, Earth Features Film Fest. So if you want to have a look at our um, video, it's Margo Mili Waran Muar Beraja, Desert Story, Sharing Desert Stories. Um, and this is what's coming up. So we got fire and biodiversity project with Environs Kimberley to understand impact of different fire patterns on biodiversity. Um, we have four Felixa cat tr rooming traps coming our way. And these are a few pictures of some boys who went um, spotlighting, um, looking for cats. So yes, some ranger men. And this is, how do you use this? Oh, shit. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. 
don't know. This photo up here you're yeah. talking about? That one. Yeah, so this is a photo we went to for that IDA um, exchange of cable crest. And we were chasing, um, the second day, we were chasing the cat everywhere, up and down the sand dunes with our ranger car, and the old girls was running, and, <laughs> and the ranger man was running, and yeah, we had a fun day. And, <laughs> and yeah, so in the end, they killed the cat, and we had a good feed that night. <laughs> yeah. um, on the highway, um, there's a picture of a dingo. You can't hardly see the cat, so he's eating the cat. Whoa! Um, yeah, and we also, so we also work um, along the coastal side. So there's two of the ranges putting up, uh, setting camera um, traps on the beach. Um, yeah. So that's it for me. I'll pass you on to Roberta. Nah, this is you now. I'll put them all up. This first uh, photo what up here, this is out at country. We went out, out, out at um, Rocky Outcrops, putting out traps for the rock wallabies. Uh, the next one, when we do our two hectare plots, we found cat tracks. Um, the other one, the boys, the ranger boys, are putting out cameras to look for any animals. And that's the other one that cat, cat. Uh, the other photo is the boys are looking to put where the uh, cameras are. Um, and my niece is putting out the um, cage trap for the wallaby. We put out the, uh, what did, um, that shape? Hessian. Um, Hessian, Hessian bag to cover the uh, cage. Sometimes we break branches and put it along the sides to keep cool, and the last one is the rock wallaby we found. This is my um, nephew doing um, aerial burning. Doing aerial burning to protect animals, habitat, and make different ages of Spin effects. A new project with EK will help our fire management by looking at historical fire and biodiversity survey. Three aerial burning and burning on ground. That's the three um, aerial burning. And that's you. me. Um, that's me. I'm doing the ground burning to clean clean up country and to look after country and to look after the animals. Next one. All right. So I'll, I'll talk a bit about what's coming up. So as part of the. Um, the f getting the Felixes and starting this monitoring, looking at threatened species, we've started to make a little mugshot ID of some of the cats we keep seeing on the cameras, particularly where we're going to put the Felixes. So this way we can kind of uh, gauge what cats are around those rocky outcrops and uh, if they were, will change with our managing and monitoring over time. So we're pretty excited to uh, get four Felixes in April of this year, two for 15 months and two for 24 months. And this is part of a threatened species project we have with Environs Kimberley, uh, focusing on 
threatened species like quolls, black-footed rock wallabies, and brush-tailed possum. Um, so for this, we've got um, biggest mob of rocky outcrops on Yangamata country, more than 400. Um, and on that map, we've got good one kind of good access road and a lot we can't get to, so we're still discovering new places. But for this project, we're going to focus on rocky outcrop habitat that contains blackfoot rock wallabies that we've found on cameras um, and put the felixes there. And then through this project, we'll assess the effectiveness of felixes in managing cats that visit this outcrop. And we hope that with regular monitoring and management, we can gauge how the pop cat and wallaby populations are going. And we have more funding to continue to look for the um, species through the RPA which is also great because when you're looking through caves, sometimes we come across sites that, of cultural heritage that we haven't found in a long time. So it enables us to locate these sites and protect them as well. And we're, um, moving forward for a longer term thing, we're wanting to find what's the best kind of option that rangers can use long term for feral cat management. So we'd be interested to try leg hold trapping. So the challenges are, uh, for cat management, so the methods that we are allowed to use easily, like cage trapping and shooting aren't very effective. We've been trying really hard, trying every kind of bait that you can think of. Um, we even heard that KFC was a winner with cats, but there's no KFC in Broome. So <laughs> when we were flying home from that Sydney Film Festival, we're in Perth and Roberta thought, I'll get a bucket of chicken. And then Lynette thought, well, I'll get a bucket. And then I thought, well, I'll get a bucket. <laughs> So then we had three people with three buckets of chicken and we were very popular on that flight back to Broome. <laughs> um, granted, not a lot of that chicken made it out on country. It didn't, a lot of it didn't get past Bidjadanga, but some did and still no cat in the cage. So I don't know how people get those photos of cats in cages. That's magic. Um, and we have a little bit of luck shooting, but it's quite hard. Um, and other methods that are available, Felix's leg holds, baitings, they require quite a lot of complicated licensing permits, it's not easily accessible to Aboriginal ranger groups, which if you then start to think, well, there's 81 RPAs in Australia and that's nearly 50% of the National Reserve System with Indigenous rangers looking after it, it's a lot of country that uh, is not having good access to ongoing cat management. It's just a bit of food for thought. Uh, with Felix's, we may be the last group to have gone through this lengthy animal ethics approval because I've heard that it might be um, on for a management tool, but We've had a long and complicated process with not a lot of support and clarity. It's been as clear as mud in relation to what kind of signage we need, where it needs to be, what it needs to look like, all that kind of stuff. It's quite costly. Uh, they're on timelines, which makes it hard for planning. Um, and with leg hold traps, I've been told you need a permit and you need experience, but how do you get experience if you don't have a permit and it kind of goes round and round a little bit. So some hopeful stuff in the future a bit more support and clarity from government departments on possible management methods and licensing permits. I've had a lot of great discussions with um, some really wonderful people in this room. Thanks Judy, um, Stella, Gary, some fans, good yarns that have been really helpful. And I've also had lots of lovely uh, yarns with people through various government departments. But by the end of the conversation, it's like the left and the right hand have never met each other nor know the other one exists. So you kind of get lost in the vortex of uh, Friendly people trying to help you, but um, it's yeah quite a difficult space to navigate. Um, this will probably all change, but if it was imagine just a, what you had to what you needed straight up if you're going to get a Felixer, and uh, I guess that would depend on which state you are. But I know it's a bit different in WA. So this is just in the in plain well plain language of all the complicated wording of what we can use at the moment, and there's not many that you can easily access. So if um, moving forward, if we figure out ways that we can change this and make it more accessible to more people easier, then I think we'll um, get a better outcome for caring for country, which is what we're all here to try and figure out how we can do. Cheers.